I got my very first computer in the early 1990s. It was a ZX Spectrum 48K, and I remember being fascinated by its capabilities. One of the first programs I wrote on it was a solver for the second degree equation, also known as quadratic equation. This is probably one of the simplest algebraic equations, and yet it has so many applications in science and engineering. In this tutorial, I'll go over the algebra behind solving the quadratic equation, and I'll also show you how to implement the algorithm in Python. Let's get started. The quadratic equation is a second-degree polynomial equation with the general form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where x is the variable and a, b and c are known numbers, the coefficients of the equation. In other words, the second-degree equation is a polynomial equation where the highest power of the variable is 2. Note that a should not be 0, otherwise the equation would be a first-degree or linear equation, which is much easier to solve. Ok, now let's solve the quadratic equation. We'll need to find the value or values of x that make the equation true. Let's start by solving a special case first. When b is 0, the equation becomes ax squared plus c equals 0, which can be easily solved using the following steps. First, I'll subtract c from both sides. So we get ax squared equals minus c. Next, I'll divide both sides by a. ax squared over a equals minus c over a. After simplifying the left side, we'll get x squared equals minus c over a. Now, I'll take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x, while the right side of the equation will give us two solutions, one positive and one negative square root. We end up with two solutions because when we square a number, we lose information about its sign. For example, both minus 2 squared and plus 2 squared equal 4. So for the case when b is 0, we'll have to solve two linear equations. x equals square root of minus c over a, and x equals minus square root of minus c over a. Now, if b is not equal to 0, we'll need to use a different approach. In this case, I'll employ a technique called completing the square. The algebra behind this technique is a bit more involved, but it's not too difficult to understand. Let's take a look. The process of completing the square consists of a series of operations that will transform the left side of the equation into the following form x squared plus 2kx plus k squared, which in turn is the square of x plus k. Indeed, if we factor out x plus k squared, we'll get x plus k multiplied by x plus k equals x squared plus kx plus kx plus k squared, which is x squared plus 2kx plus k squared. Now, back to our equation. The first step in completing the square is to divide each side by a. So we'll get x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a equals 0. Next, I'll subtract c over a from both sides. x squared plus b over a times x equals minus c over a. Now I need to add the square of one half of b over a, the coefficient of x, to both sides. We just turned the left side of the equation into the square of x plus b over 2a. You can verify that if you wish. Finally, we can take the square root of both sides. x plus b over 2a equals plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And after we subtract b over 2a from both sides, we'll get the following equation. x equals minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. 
There you have it, the quadratic formula. The part of the quadratic formula underneath the square root symbol is the discriminant, and is denoted by the Greek letter delta. You can also use capital D. The discriminant can be positive, negative, or zero. If the discriminant is positive, the equation will have two real solutions. A negative discriminant means that the equation will have two imaginary solutions. And if the discriminant is equal to zero, the equation has a single real solution. So that's how to solve the quadratic equation. The formula is not difficult to remember, but if you forget it, don't worry. You can always derive it using the steps I just showed you. Now let's move on to implementing the algorithm in Python. The first thing we need to do is import the complex math library. This library provides us with the complex number data type and the number of mathematical functions and constants, including the square root function that we'll be using. Next, we'll define the quadratic solver function. This function takes three arguments, a, b, and c. These are the coefficients of the equation. We can start by checking if a is equal to zero. If it is, we'll raise an error of type value error, with the message the coefficient a cannot be zero. This is because the quadratic equation is not defined when a is equal to zero. Next, we'll calculate the discriminant, delta, as you might recall. d equals float b squared minus four times a c. And now we can calculate the two solutions using the quadratic formula we derived earlier. x1 equals minus b minus, and I use the square root function of the CMath library, so we'll need the square root of d over 2a. And x2 is minus b plus square root of d over 2a. Finally, let's return the two solutions as a tuple. Let's test our function. I'll use the input function to get the three coefficients from the user. Note that we need to convert the values to floats using the float function. And since these conversions can fail, we'll wrap these statements into a try except block. The error handling is important because we don't want our program to crash if the user enters invalid input. Instead, I'll catch the value error exception that gets raised when the conversion fails and print an error message. If there are no errors, we can call the quadratic solver function and print the results. Note that I used the else clause instead of adding additional code to the try clause. This approach avoids catching errors that aren't raised by the code protected by the try except statement. Speaking of errors, the quadratic solver function can also raise an error when the coefficient a is zero. So I'll wrap the call in another try except block and handle the validation error. Okay, we can now test our code. As you can see, the imaginary part gets printed even if it's equal to zero. This is because the complex number data type always prints both the real and imaginary parts. I can quickly fix this by checking if the imaginary part is zero. If it is, I'll only use the real part of the complex value. I'll rerun the program using one for a, zero for b, and minus four for c. This should produce the results two and minus two. As you can see, the output doesn't contain the imaginary part anymore. But if I enter the values one, two, and say three, the imaginary part gets displayed. Cool, let's see how our program behaves when we enter invalid input. I'll enter first q for a and then zero. Perfect. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, you'll probably also like my course Software Development from A to Z. Link in the description below. It's a comprehensive guide that covers everything you need to know about becoming a professional software developer and it also includes a Python course. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.